for Facebook, at the core of Facebook is, is privacy in many ways. Um, and one of the things that we build into all of our products, uh, whether the products that we work with on our own or the, the way in which we expose those products to partners, um, is giving users you know, very clear control over who they share information with and how they share it. And so it's really important for us that users understand precisely when they want to share a piece of information, who's going to see that. And so that reflects itself also in how we expose our technologies to our partners um, in a similar sort of way, where we work with them to make sure that it's very clear to users the sort of information that they're sharing, why they're sharing it, and then what the partner will do with that information um, and the benefit that a user will get from it. So my role at Facebook, um, I lead a team called Platform Partnerships, and we work with all the companies that are building on the Facebook platform. Uh, Facebook platform is free, it's open, anyone can build on it. Uh, you don't have to come to talk to us, you can just simply come to the website, um, agree to our terms of service, and our terms of service have um, various kind of rules and uh, restrictions on what you can do with the information that you get from, from uh, Facebook. Um, at its core, what happens is a Facebook user, all the data that you have on Facebook, is we believe it's yours. Like you have this information, it's uh, information about you, it's who your friends are. What we've done with Facebook Platform is enable you to take that with you to lots of other websites or other applications so they can personalize the experience and they can make it social. So when you go to you know, a travel site like Gogobot, you will actually be able to see recommendations on where you'd want to travel or friends who you might want to ask about a place to go travel in doing so. I think one of the things that's surprised me, at least, about Facebook users, especially as we've grown, um, we're now in many, many, we're 60 plus languages, um, hundreds and hundreds of millions of people, over two thirds of them outside of the United States. Uh, what's actually surprising is that people are almost the same around the world in the sense of how they use Facebook um, and how they share information. And uh, when I first thought about it, you expect that you would see geographical differences or things like that. And really, at its core, people are people. Uh, they want to connect with their friends. They want to talk with their family. They want to share the important things um, that's going on in their lives. And that's the same whether you live in Italy or whether you live uh, you know, in Africa or whether you live here in the United States. Facebook has grown immensely over the past seven years um, that it's been around, um, yet we are still just at the very beginning. So if we have 600 million people on Facebook, um, there's something like six billion people on the planet. Um, I think the internet population is probably two to three billion. So uh, we think that we're still at the very beginning. Um, in many ways, what we're trying to do with Facebook is um, you know, kind of get everyone in the network. And once everyone's in the network, you can actually start to build the really amazing and compelling experiences on top of it. So we think we have, still have a long ways to go to, to getting there. I mean, there are countries, you know, we're currently blocked in China. China's one of the largest countries on the planet. So like, obviously, there's a huge opportunity there. Um, similarly, in India, we're still at early stages. Um, there are lots of countries where we think there's growth. And then new people are coming online all the time, um, especially in developing countries where mobile phones are just becoming increasingly the way in which people access the internet. So the Facebook experience is uh, it's more curation than aggregation. Uh, and it's actually curation by your friends. And so Facebook, in many ways, we don't have a voice. Uh, there's no Facebook news or Facebook TV when you come to the site. Uh, everything that you experience on the site has been contributed by the people that you've chosen to, to be friends with, the people that are important to you. Um, and generally, the information that they're sharing is the stuff that they think is important and that they want to share there. Uh, and that's a really important aspect of the way the site works. Facebook is very much uh, not about Facebook. It's about the users. And it's very much about allowing users to connect and share with their friends and their family and the people that are important to them. We believe at Facebook that social media is really transforming lots of different industries. And so the you know, kind of disruption that you saw in social gaming uh, with companies like Zynga and Playfish and Playdom. Um, these are companies who put people first and put people at the center of the games. And in many ways, social games are more about the interactions you have with your friends 
than they are about the gameplay themselves. Uh, in fact, if you strip the, your friends away from them, they're, they're not particularly compelling games. Um, but because they have people in them, they're some of the fastest growing games ever. So you know, Cityville by, by Zynga went from zero users to 60 million users in the course of six weeks um, because it's playing with, your, playing with your friends. We call this concept social design, which is really putting people at the center of the application. Drives engagement, drives usage incredibly well. Um, we think what's happened in gaming is going to happen in lots of other industries. Gaming frequently leads the way on lots of different platforms. We think it's a similar thing happening in social media. Uh, and so whether this is um, commerce or recruiting, um, travel, lots of these industries are at their core about people. And we think you're going to see a lot of uh, transformation and disruption in these industries, um, frequently by startups who say, I'm going to make a social experience first and foremost and go from there. So for example, you could imagine a store which says, by, def by default, when you shop in the store, everything that you look at and everything you put in your shopping cart will be shared with your friends. And that by doing that, that store would get so much more traffic and distribution from you sharing um, that they'd be willing to have lower and lower prices. And so you'd get a benefit by having lower prices, and you'd be able to discover what your friends are actually looking at and shopping with. Um, and it's a fundamental rethinking of the way that commerce works today. Um, and it would be hard to take an existing, you know, if Amazon turned that on, it would be shocking for those of us that use it. Uh, but it's easy for a startup who's starting from the beginning and really kind of betting their company big um, to really create an experience like that. The social media companies that will succeed will be the companies uh, that don't try to put social on, bolted on on the side really, um, but are really social from the ground up. That set user expectations that what you do within this experience will be shared. Um, and that's actually a value and, and the discovery that you have within the experiences from your friends and therefore you're sharing and contributing back to that is creating an overall value in the entire network.